right, so we're going to be determining normal probabilities on the Casio FXCG50AU, our calculator here. So in a standard normal distribution, so remember a standard normal distribution has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, find these. So the way that we're going to do it, we're going to go to our stats mode right there. Uh, and then we're going to go to distribution. And you can see the binomial sitting there. We've used that before. We're going to use the normal one. And we're going to use NCD here. We don't really have a use for NPD, NCD. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got. Data variable, that's what we want. Lower. So our lower bound here is 0 0.7. So I'll type that in. Our upper bound is 1.2. So I'll type that in. Um, now, our standard deviation is 1 because it's a standard normal distribution. And our mean is 0 because it's a standard normal distribution. Now, arrow down a couple of times. Uh, click on this button here. And you can see it's got this little draw here. Click draw. All right, fantastic. You can see it's drawn us a nice little normal distribution. It's found the area under the curve between 0 0.7 and 1.2, and it's given me an answer of 0 0.12689. And you really want to go to at least four decimal places here. All right, so there's my answer there. I really want to show the examiners what I'm doing here. So I might just go back to the previous screen. And just uh, if I was doing an exam, I would write lower, upper, uh, standard deviation, and mean, and put in my four values there so the examiners can see what I'm doing. And so I've put in my lower, upper, uh, standard deviation, and mean, and I'll just draw in a quick little... Uh, sketch of what this would look like. So that's 0 0.7 there, that's 1.2 there, and there's my area there. All right, so there's my full solution to a question like that. Uh, now, these next two, um, we're just going to do them in the same kind of way. So again, we're in our stat mode. Now, lower, probably that x is less than 1.9. Now, I'm going to draw my sketch first for you this time, which is something that you might get asked to do on like a tech-free exam or something. So it's going to look... I might just make it a bit bigger. Mean of 0, x is less than 1.9, so I'll put 1.9 up here. And we want to know this area all the way down here. Now, my lower value is just an extremely low value. It's infinity. So I'm just going to put... I'm going to sort of cheat here on my calculator. And for this value here, I'm just going to put an incredibly la uh, large negative number as my lower value. Uh, now my upper value is going to be 1.9 in this case. And go down here again, draw. You can see, hopefully it's drawn what I drew. Yep. Uh, and I get a probability P equals 0.9. 7, 1, 3, 2 rounds up. And again, I would put in my lower, upper, um, and that there. In an exam, you might not have copy and paste, but I do, so I'll just copy and paste that over here. Now, question three here, it's the same, but it's kind of in reverse. So probably that x is greater than negative 1.4. If I sketch this, and you really should be able to sketch these. X is greater than negative 1.4. Negative 1.4, I'll just place here somewhere. It doesn't matter where you put it. Uh, and then this is the sketch that I'm doing. All right, so that means that my lower this time is um, that value, negative 1.4. My upper is a very large number. And I will draw it like that can see I get a probability of 0 0.9192. And again, I would always put in what I typed into my calculator so that examiners can see what I'm doing. Now, probably the most interesting question here, of course, is this last one. Uh, it's a conditional probability one that you've done before. Doing these questions is really going to test your ability um, to draw these sketches. So I'm going to draw in what I'm looking at here. So I'm going to draw two normal distributions and then I might put them together at the end. 
So I'm going to do this first one here. Probably that x is greater than 0 0.5. So here's 0, that's 0. This is 0 0.5. This is the one that it's greater than. All right. This is supposed to look the same. So just try to get rid of that for a second. Let's try again. Close enough. There's zero again. So I'm trying to draw them below each other, above and below each other. Negative 1.3 to 2. So here's, um, we'll call this negative 1.3. 2, we'll put it like over there somewhere. Uh, and then I might just draw, color this in a different color. All right, so if we sort of smush these two together, that's how we find our solution. So remember, when you're doing conditional probability, uh, it's going to be equal to the probability of this and this. Um, so if we put them over the top of each other, down here, the part where they overlap is between 0 0.5 and 2. All right, so I'm just going to write that out here. Okay, so there's our 0 0.5 and 2. That's the overlap or the intersection of those two. Um, and then we're going to divide that by um, what our condition was. So negative probability of negative 1.3 is less than x, which is less than 2. And now we're going to have to type both of those into our calculator to get uh, an answer here. So... The first one, lower 0 0.5, upper 2. Um, oops. Now, I haven't drawn it this time. I don't really have to draw them, but I do like to draw them to make sure that what I was thinking in my head is what I typed into my calculator. So 0 0.2858. Might keep some more decimals here. 7874. Uh, okay. And then divide it by 1.3 to 2. Lower 1.3 to 2. Um, that looks right. And then we'll draw that. Um, oops, that's not what I wanted. I want negative. That's why I draw them, because I like to make sure that what was in my head got onto the calculator. That's better. Uh, 0 0.88044. And I'll put that 9 in there too. Now, if I type those two numbers into my calculator, I'll get an answer. All right, I've got my second calculator out here, and I've got 0 0.3246. 3246. And that is the answer to that question there. All right, so it's all relatively straightforward. You use your calculator. Make sure that you scroll down to the bottom and draw them so that they are what you think they are, and then type in your answer and also type in, write in what you actually did. I want to stop before one more example here. Now, every other example I did in this video was a standard normal distribution, but we can do it with any distribution. So uh, one more example, people's heights have a mean of 172 and a standard deviation of eight centimeters. Find the probability that a person has a height greater than 177. So we're trying to find the probability that x is greater than 177. Uh, and then we can just go back here. And now we need to be a bit more careful with what we type in. So um, just drawing it really quickly. Uh, the mean this time is 172. Okay, so on my calculator, the mean is 172. The standard deviation, uh, which has fallen off my screen, is eight centimetres. So I'll just put in eight centimetres here. Uh, find the probability that a person has a height greater than 177. So 177 is there, and I want to know that. Okay, so a lower of 177, oops, go back to my calculator, and an upper of a very large number. Go down and draw it. And we'll get our answer of uh, 0 0.265, 0 0.265, 9, 8, so 5, 2, 6, 6, 0.
will do just fine. And again, you really want to write in what you type in. All right, that's um, determining normal probabilities.